So, the Ocelot XA21 has finally been released into GTA Online, but is it worth buying? I'm Coindog, and together we're going to find out. So this full review is going to be split into 5 categories with a score of 10 given for each. This will then give us a final score at the end. So let's start with the design of this vehicle. So the XA21 has a really nice look about it with sleek lines and an aggressive stance from certain angles. However, in my opinion it does not stand out from the crowd of supercars we have in GTA today on looks alone. The rear end of this vehicle is based off a Jaguar CX75 which was a concept hybrid vehicle announced several years ago. It's probably the most interesting part of the car to be honest. The front end to me has that generic supercar appearance to it and it appears to be based off something like a Maserati Gran Turismo or something like that. All in all I think I'm going to give the car a 7 out of 10 for looks. It's definitely a nice looking vehicle but I feel like it's hard to go higher than that with such a generic front end that doesn't really stand out from the crowd. Moving on to the next category we've got customization. Now this car has got loads of customization options for it, probably more than any other car I've played with in GTA Online. It even has more than most of the Vet Benny's vehicles to be honest, it's really impressive. You can change anything from the bumpers and skirts right down to the engine cover and wing mirrors with almost all of the parts in between. What's more, the customization offered on the whole is not just your run of the mill colour changes, there are some really significant differences between the options available. It allows you to create some really unique looks on this car and with so many options to choose from, it's unlikely you'll see another X8021 just like yours. The only thing the car is missing in terms of customization is spoilers, but with an active spoiler on the car as standard, what else could you possibly need? This is a solid 10 out of 10 for customization from me. So the next category we're going to have a look at is the sound. So let's have a listen. It sounds pretty good to me with that growl at lower speeds and the revving. The top end noise sounds a little bit strange, but overall it's got quite a nice sound to it. I think I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for the sound. So now the category that many of you will be interested in the most and that is performance. So some of you who have been on my channel for a while now will know that I used to do 3 tests for each vehicle and I've got some plans for this going forward which I'll work on between now and the next DLC. For this video review however where we're just giving an overview of the car overall, we're just going to be doing one performance test around docked points. So let's get this out of the way immediately. This is a quick car. I don't think there's any other car that sticks to the road quite like this one does. It's so planted it's unreal. The turning on it is super responsive but it doesn't really oversteer or understeer. It's just beautifully balanced in almost every way. The area I feel it does lose out a little bit is in acceleration out of corners and in ultimate top speed. It almost feels like it doesn't downshift enough sometimes which leaves you in too high a gear to get the acceleration out of the corner you would expect and the top speed is average at best. All in all though I'm really impressed with this vehicle and as you can see from the clips here it's just eating this track up for breakfast. The lap time this car gets is by far the quickest I've taken around this circuit by 6 tenths of a second and it's one of the only cars to get into the 58 second window with a 58.2 second lap time. The Wagner that I've tested as well just for the purpose of this video for a comparison managed to get a 58.8. In terms of a rating, my immediate thoughts were it's got to be a 10, but when you consider the weaknesses it does have which will put it at a significant disadvantage on quite a few tracks against other supercars, I think a 9 is a fair rating. It's not unbeatable, but it is way up there in the top tier of supercars we have. The final category that we're going to be looking at is value for money. Now on first glance people are going to say that this car is way overpriced and not worth the money at all, and whilst I can understand that viewpoint I don't fully agree with it. The car is $2.4 million which make no mistake is a really big amount of money but for that cash you are getting one of the fastest cars in the game, more customization than almost any other vehicle, a really nice unique sound and an interesting exterior design from the rear which at the end of the day is what you're going to be looking at for a lot of the time when you're driving it. My personal opinion is that perhaps slightly overpriced, perhaps closer to 2 million would have been a fair price for it but it's not in the way overpriced category in my book. I think I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10 for this. So adding all those scores up, this car gets a solid score of 43 points out of 50. It's a really great vehicle and I would honestly say that it's a car that everyone should own. Especially if you're new to GTA and new to racing in general, this car is probably the easiest supercar to drive quick by a long way. And I find it really hard not to recommend it to you guys to be honest. So that's going to be the end of my review for this. Please leave a like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing a lot more like this. Uh, thank you very much for watching everyone. Coindog out.